Hello and welcome everyone to the first and potentially last, if we never do another one, uh, what I'm quickly calling Ninja Knights, because I can't think of another title at the moment. That is essentially a podcast right now about the APL and all the issues and controversy it's had. I'm here today with Tristan and OHSoft. Tristan, please tell us a bit about yourself. I'm Tristan Arden Airsoft. I'm the guy who posts the memes um, about Airsoft, show it how real it is, tell it how it is. And I run the 40 millimeter grenade laundry as well, where I give people BB facials and booty blasts up their ass. And I'm also the guy who poured the bag of BBs on the dude on the APL. That was such a killer moment. <laughs> So uh, I'm Sean, otherwise known as Outer Heaven Airsoft, uh, shortened down to OHA Soft on uh, on Instagram. And my whole thing in Airsoft is really just a, a dedication to Metal Gear Solid. I've always loved sneaking and stealth, and uh, Airsoft just happened to be a really great uh, vehicle to let me kind of uh, grow that out. And it's uh, something I've been doing for like 15 plus years now. Man, we need to sneak together. <laughs> yeah but and, yeah, that's, a, that's a good way to simplify what i do there <laughs> yeah and i am the camera ninja and i'm much more known as a guy who's filming ass off and playing it um specifically usually on the east coast with stuff like desolation or anything at emr or zulu as i said before we are here to talk about the apl um if somehow you've clicked on this and you don't know what the apl is it was essentially this project that was filmed and announced about a year and a half ago uh, i believe in september that was essentially pitched as i believe they said as an american gladiators airsoft which is essentially this competition that would have a bunch of teams competing in these different game modes um and then the idea was that afterwards they would film it with a bunch of cameras upload it edit it onto the site and you would pay uh, a certain amount to watch it sort of pay-per-view yeah. obviously that had a lot of issues from the get-go, but specifically after filming, um, there was a great deal of stuff that happened. Tristan, if you can tell us a bit more about that. Basically, in a nutshell, delay after delay after delay. It started off with Black Friday sale. They dropped the price from twenty four ninety nine to nineteen ninety seven, And then that date passed. Then they said January. Then that date passed. Then end of February or something like that. That date passed. Mm -hmm. They kept pushing it back, and now we're at October of next of this year. So it's basically a year. And as we're recording this now, almost the end of November, they have missed the final deadline of sorts because they have yet to announce another uh, deadline point. I'd okay. also like to point in that uh, you know there had usually what drove much of these were 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 concerted efforts from the community to uh to get uh chris machi otherwise known as a uh, triton fights or or flex matchmaker yeah. um he uh to, to get him to respond and say hey this is you know the, the, the last i spoke to him pretty much he said that he's not releasing a product unless it's fully polished and he's happy with it and then announced that it was going to be coming out at the end of october and uh What's been interesting with this is that deadline, of course, came and went like they all have. And uh, he's not responded to anyone in the community or made any sort of acknowledgement that the Airsoft Pro League is a thing. Yeah, I mean, and it's a good point to kind of bring up, you know, um, as you just mentioned with the deadlines and, you know, how they announced it. When we say they announced it, this is the, the, the Airsoft Pro League Instagram account announcing this. This is not as... Uh, Sean had said, uh, Chris Machi, a flex matchmaker, his account doesn't have a mention of the APL. I believe the last time is October of last year. If you look at his timeline, he doesn't, he isn't involved in the APL. You know, if you, if you only watch his Instagram, you don't know what that is anymore at this point. That ended a no. year ago as far as his Instagram is concerned. Nick is the financer and one of the, and he was also doing some of the editing in the post-op and the post-production. Dan Canobio is the brother of Nick, and he is a he's an he's an announcer. Um, I know he does announcing for like uh, uh, for for uh, for boxing matches and stuff. 
Dan's involvement really extended so far as maybe doing a, uh, you know, doing a solid for his brother and being co-host next to um, a guy named Pete, who is uh, known as Pain X on uh, on on Instagram. I think his name's Jake, uh, or the real deal Airsoft, because you see yeah, him yes. in a bunch of the APL stuff, even in some of the videos, and as well as some a lot of the social media. But I don't know if he's part of. Flex flights, flex fights, or Triton fights. Again, he's, he's he seemed he especially when doing filming. I don't want to talk too much about that because you can go for hours on the filming. But he seemed to be almost a sort of producer or some sort of level like that. He was very much in charge of getting a bunch of stuff set up. So was he just somebody like just contacted who was in Airsoft? You know, was he just somebody they brought in to be their like liaison in Airsoft? Yeah, I think. Uh... Correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, but, like, uh, Chris played Airsoft for six months or whatever. During that six months, he met Jake, and then Chris pitched the idea. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's pretty much how I understand it, as Jake yeah, told it to I me. It. Okay, and that kind of makes <clears throat> sense, almost, because it seemed like Jake was, like, because one of the questions that I think some people, even in the ASAP uh, podcast that they, they had way back before it even filmed, was, you know, how did Chris Machi, how did they these people get involved in Airsoft? You know, how did they get this idea? Because it's a very big jump from the MMA style stuff they were doing. Yeah, it's uh, so ha as I know it, um, apparently Chris got his start in Airsoft back in like 2018 at a birthday party like that of his own. So he like, like many people who play airsoft saw us learned about it and then was like, I'm going to just have a birthday party there. We know many a rental kids who started <laughs> from uh, such, uh, su such storied backgrounds, but you know, throughout his time, he met, he met Jake as Tristan was saying. And, um, uh, yeah, they, I guess they kind of just got off on a good foot there and that's, uh, and they were taught and I'm sure that, Chris was mentioning the work that he does in filming tri uh, in, in Triton fights at the time because he'd been doing a lot of that work um, and you know pretty much selling out shows on Long Island and 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 then paper and then uh, televising and pay per viewing them um, on Fubo TV I believe and like this other thing called CompuBox. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah. They uh, I think that's where the the idea for it all kind of first came around and uh, or at least that's what Jake told me when he first called me to talk to me about APL back in like 2019, I think. And you said you were contacted by them or by Jake. Um, what was that? Like, what would, what were they basically talking to you about? What did they want you to do? Yeah. So, um, when Jake first reached out to me and I, I kind of want to caveat this with, with something of all the people who've been burned by the airsoft pro league experience, I'd say Jake probably has been burned the most but kind of like a phoenix rising from the ashes, he's totally turned it around and used the connections <laughs> yeah. he's made to like, you know, really build himself out as somebody to be respected in the tech and community. Um, you know, I've I've known the guy since he was like the first time he ever came to Strike Force years and years ago when he wore this blue like consistently like a uniform, this blue hoodie and a plate carrier and uh and you know, he would come with a friend and I've really been seeing him kind of grow through the years in this so when he called me, it kind of it was one. It was a hit out of left field because I never thought something like the pro league, with being filmed or what it actually ended up becoming on those few days that we filmed, like I never thought something like that was going to happen in airsoft, at least on the East Coast. And when he called me and told me about it, um, I was pretty shocked. And he didn't call me and tell me about it as somebody he wanted as a player. He really wanted me more to come in as like a consultant and just like. I guess sanity check the things that they were working on and the game styles and stuff. But that was pretty much where, you know, my involvement ended because as I, as, as, as to my knowledge, Jake very much was involved in planning the game modes and figuring out like the progression of the teams. So Chris uh, was looking for personalities. Um, so I guess I struck as a personality that was, that happened to be nearby the area where they're filming. So Chris contacted me hey, do you want to do APL? It's like American Gladiators. We'll uh, try to explain it the way it was explained to me, um, like how Sean did, like American Gladiators, but with Airsoft. Yeah, kind of um, the, the official pitch sort of they had on the site and stuff. 
It's something like that, yeah. And we want your personality they, because they really wanted my personality other than me just participating. They wanted my personality. They wanted other players' personalities. Try to make it a unique experience. And uh, other than that, what I did in the APL was basically be a player. And then for some spinoff, I became a contractor because one of the contractors had to go to work. It was sort of funny for me because, again, I'd never heard about the APL or anything before they had contacted me. But, yeah, they had me come down, and I ended up... And I, and I think the other reason they wanted me in, too, is because the other main videographer, uh, Train, who I think also does a bunch of the edits and stuff for uh, uh, yeah. Triton Fights, was using a gimbal for the player side. And I assume they wanted basically someone to kind of mimic his stuff or mimic his side with the gimbal on the contractor side. And I don't know of anybody else in Airsoft who like consistently uses a gimbal to film stuff. I was, I had very little sort of experience or interaction with the, the, the staff to point. It was mainly me talking to train and then a bit of Jake in the beginning. So honestly, after reason I'm glad talking to you guys about this is just knowing a lot more of the behind the scenes. Um, but did you guys know of anyone else in the Airsoft, uh, just world that was down there, either as a player or as a ref or as someone else? Oh, my uh, Milsim team, Shrek Tactical. Other players, Airsoft Spartacus, um, NYC Insomnia. I think they were contractors. Um, so, yeah, some of them were. They weren't even Insomnia at the time. They were just like like Mickey, for I instance. I, yeah, he yeah he was just like a player at that point. Yeah, I imagine it was also kind of cost. Because I imagine, you know, you ask, like, say, like someone like Jet to come out. Like, he's in California. Like... He's yeah, not going to come out on his own. He's going to say, okay, cool, give me a plane ticket and, you know, a hotel, and then it's like... Um, interestingly enough, they did do that with somebody. Really? Tristan, do you remember Jenny Lynn? I was thinking the same thing. She was... She's a... Her father owns... I think it's called Freedom Airsoft in Arizona. Yeah, she... Yeah, they con they asked her if she would be, like, like interview... Like, almost like a, like a ringside interviewer for after the matches and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking that the, half the reason the APL even, like, became a thing beyond some crazy ideas on a blackboard that I came in and read one day is because Chris needed to keep kind of moving forward and trying to make money. And I yeah. and, and I know in my heart that he really believed that this was something that had the, the possibility of being big. Because it, at the end of the day, Airsoft is a large sport. A lot of people play it more and more by the day, despite how I'm, however many mag dump videos you see on rentals. Um, Definitely believed in it. That's for damn sure. I agree. I think even much believed in it. I don't think he ever went into this with the idea of trying to scam somebody for a bunch of reasons. But I do very much. I, I didn't only interact with him for a little bit, but I do think, good or bad, you know, right or wrong, he did believe in this idea of the APL that he was actually legitimately trying to make it a thing. Yeah, definitely. The The idea was top-notch. The production was almost as top-notch as the idea, but the execution and the follow-up really suffered. Your, with your involvement, or with, I guess anyone's involvement here, you know, has this sort of helped or hurt you in terms of social media or just making connections or doing different things in Airsoft? Funny thing about that, <laughs> besides all the memes on Facebook, like, I'm like, a bug's life caterpillar and i'm like the then there was another uh, meme of me being russell from up <laughs> that was like dead ass funny and then me mm -hmm. actually being like roasted as danger close because i'm fat as fuck i'm like, oc airsoft commented on like the the video he's like and I think Danger Close is about to be close to diabetes as anyone could ever be. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I had a fat ass face and I <laughs> ate a lot and I did not work out. So I was like, yeah, you're, you're right on that one. But so that was the negative part. But the positive okay. part is. Okay, that was a negative part. Okay. <laughs> the positive part is that I got, a, I got a lot of views on that bag dump video. That was like the whole highlight of the thing. That just like showcase what, the, I, what the crazy shit I'm capable of. And I also uh, submitted it on Novridge, uh giveaway, and I actually won an SSP-18. Really? I, mean, I was wondering like, who won that. Won. Yeah. <laughs> oh, congrats. Plus, Thanks. you also have, I mean, and going into a bit of the, the negative aspect of the APL, again, going back to the delays and stuff, 
you have become sort of a bit of a, also like just a known person uh, yeah, hounding the 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 APL as well as Chris um, about releasing the content about you know the delays and stuff like it's very much expected to see memes or you know the top comment of like the Instagram post being from you to a point for most of the of the posts. Yeah, dead ass. Yeah, <laughs> dead ass. Which I, I mean, I think it's good. Again, I'm, I'm. That was one of the things I was kind of curious about. Was you know why and and why did besides your involvement in it in the APL, why did this one bother you much as the delays and stuff? Was there a specific reason that like the APL not releasing in time, not holding up to its promises, was an like a kind of real issue for you? That's basically it, and it was also the fact that I was super involved in it. Not as involved as Sean was, but like, yeah, with all the bull crap that happened, how it was executed poorly, how it was perceived, how all this, like, a conglomeration of social media posts about it, my involvement with it, what I hoped it would be, and the absolute shitstorm of delays that just mm. came out of it. I thought it was just a combination of those things plus me being the person I am. If you're going to do something and you don't do it, like, why bother? Yeah, like, it's sort of a... a, a, a... It's like you took away something that I was expecting. Yeah. Like, you, you were about to give me a cheeseburger, but you give me a hamburger? Like, what the fuck? Well, not even no, in this you, case. You, a promised a che- yeah, you promised a cheeseburger, <laughs> and then you gave me an empty bag. Beyond meeting a bunch of pretty kind of like cool people who I had known but never really got a chance to actually like hang out with, um, I did – I wasn't – it's so weird because it's like I gained so much but I really – but what I really lost was an awesome opportunity to kind of see this cool product go out. So like yeah. again, I – was only supposed to help build it. And I dedicated while at a time when I was looking for work, a lot of time to, you know, the pre-production, you know, the day of shooting, I actually, or the day, the night before shooting, I went down, Chris called me and was just like, we need bodies. And I came uh-huh. down to seeing the, a field being built overnight. Strike force hadn't even really opened yet. And they just were building this field while this while the field manager was ripping his hair out because nothing they were building was up to code. Like if you ran into some of these buildings, they would have fallen right over, you know, like nothing like everything was being done slapdash. And I came down there. I helped out with that, which was cool. It was a great experience to build an airsoft field. It's one that now has actually gotten me the ability to build the current airsoft field at Strike Force. So whenever they whenever they uh, get a group of guys together, they call me. I come down and I help them build out the field, which is cool. You know, I've been going there forever, and now I get a chance to do something like that. You know, once the once the post production came and it was time for editing, you know, that saw me hyping it up to everyone I knew because here's a project that I don't only help get off the ground a little bit. Yeah, not a big involvement, but enough of an involvement where I dedicated multiple time and then building days and then playing in the damn thing. So, you know, I, I, I helped put all this work in. So I went out to everyone I knew, including friends who'd never played Airsoft, pretty much made them get a pay-per-view. I made them <laughs> buy into it because oh, no. that was what, that's what Chris was doing. Chris was – for people where like every person you got recommended you would like get a little bit of a percentage back which you know i didn't really care about that yeah the affiliate link but what i care more about was just the idea like i want and it's so funny because affiliate links it's like something when like you're doing like a like a wrestling match like a like a small community wrestling match you know you the people who are wrestling are sent out to go and bring in the audience, friends yeah. and family. Much. It's almost like a local and, band too. You know, you have to bring, you have to get the people to show up, or it'll be an empty bar. Exactly, and that's kind of the feel that the APL had. So, in the aftermath of it all, it just left me super sour. Um, I know that I, social media wise. I mean, everyone knows I was involved in it because I've gone on many a rant, <laughs> pretty much calling out Chris Machi and calling out the concept of the APL because Chris, Chris was an embarrassment post-production. The dude, he couldn't 
go through a single podcast without, you know, accusing the hosts of having an ulterior motive because he was so protective of the ideas that he had at the APL. Uh, for me, it's funny enough, I, I actually didn't get that much of a difference. And I don't, mainly because, like, I'm not the kind of person who talks about the stuff he's involved in until it's released. And in this case, it never happened. Other than that, um, just honestly, actually in transparency and just to say, it's like I, I did get paid by the APL after the fact. Um, I, I, I had gone into it not expecting to get paid. Um, and I was happy to kind of be involved in the production. Again, I love the idea of the APL. I love the concept of bringing higher end productions to Airsoft. You know, I think that's something that's really cool. And it was interesting to see, again, we don't want to get too much in the production of stuff, but to see how some of the stuff didn't work out, how certain things were focused too much. So I guess learning aspect wise, it was neat to see how it happened. Um, I will note too that for my days that I've worked on site, so like when they were doing promo filming and stuff, they did pay me, you know, it wasn't a lot of money, but they did, oh, same, they did yes. pay me to show up for my time. Again, adding to that air that this was something that was not just happening as in the moment. Like this was something that they had budgeted and planned out for down the line. When in reality, this was totally by the seat of the pants. Tristan, did you want to add something? Hi. Uh I was about to say, damn, you guys got paid, and that's I, it. <laughs> and, and, well, and again, I'm, and it's one of those things too. Is like, wh I'm always wondering, like, you know, why did I get like? I mean, I, get, I I I own a production company, you know, that I do, and I normally would get paid for those things. But one of the things that work in the ass or, or just in social media is that you a bunch of times you do stuff for free. So I was still very surprised that that happened, and I'm always kind of curious as to almost why, like, you know, why me and not other people. Yeah, I remember seeing some of the, the screenshots of stuff like that and like even the ASAP podcast, uh, if you want to get into yeah. that. But like, yeah, like how he said that was like 70K was spent. Well, I, I think he was able to blow it because Airsoft, um, he paid all of his debts to everyone involved but the Airsoft community. Yeah. In yeah. Airsoft, he would never be able to do anything again. I haven't seen him play Airsoft since this whole thing happened, unless he's just going to a new field. But no one has said anything about Chris showing up there or at Area 53. And I think part of the reason – oh, obviously, he burned the Airsoft community. But I think he's just gone full-time back to MMA, back to a world that he hadn't burned pretty much. He's like M. Night Shyamalan and The Last Airbender. We don't talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, it's also it's also his money maker. Well, yeah, that know? too. I know. This was I think this was always a pet project to him that he that he saw great potential in, and he just severely underestimated the post production. But in terms of the community, I mean, from his own words, he once he once he was like he was talking to me about the trolls online because he did get trolled. I mean, rightfully so. You step into a spotlight, people are going to troll you, and you just got to accept it gracefully. Yeah, but you'd think he'd also be used to that because I can't, I can't imagine the MMA trolls are any less, you know, annoying, you know, in the world of Honestly, MMA. Honestly, that, com that community is weird, though, because every, like, <laughs> I don't ever see anybody dragging him. And I say that community is weird knowing that I'm uh, – like now I'm scared that somebody from that community is going to come and beat the shit out of me, which, which they could do. <laughs> I guess they can. Uh, yeah, they, they are specifically trained to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. like I am in my community. I, I just play with fake, fake knives, fake guns. <laughs> I don't actually fight. But no, they're all pretty uh, self – they're all pretty congratulatory over there because, again, he – He's doing something for amateurs that they usually don't get. Most amateur fighters would kill for a chance to do what, what Chris is giving them, which is a chance to go fight in a packed arena on a platform on, and, and that's going to be streamed and videotaped. And, you know, if you look at Chris, I mean, he exudes like, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of like that kind of charisma. Bravado that kind of, and, yeah. Yeah, it's the only kind of charisma that a that that a guy who 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 doesn't iron who unironically rents slingshots and drives them around Florida after promising a whole community of airsofters that this product is going to come out. <laughs> he really thought very little of airsofters at large. Once he did the airsoft pro league, because I remember one of the things he was pissed about. He was like, because he would he was filming these promos where he was having all the video, all the people who were playing in the pro league come out and say a little bit as to how they got into it and what inspired them. And he was so mad that none of them had like the natural angry charisma that the fighters had. Yeah. And I tried to explain to him, I'm like, this is, 
for most people, this is a weekend fun thing that they do with their friends. Whereas MMA fighters, like, bro, you're getting punched in the face. Like, yeah, your inspirations are going to be worn on the heart of your sleeve. Yeah, and I guess I could, and, yeah, I could see that him being confused by that because you think like MMA or even wrestlers, like, they have that sort of over the top bravado, but they believe they they're almost actors to a point. I think he was mad that the airsoft community didn't bring that same level of zeal yeah. to what he was doing. Two very different cultures. Whereas airsoft, and and Tristan can tell you this, people rip you apart. People get a, people don't like what you're doing. They are not afraid to tell you that this sucks. You know, and it's it's. I'm guilty I've, of that. Yeah, I've, well, I've had it happen are. to me too. <laughs> you were very guilty of I've that. Lost- <laughs> and random guy kept technically didn't cover it he talked about beforehand his main points were i think what everyone talked about was that that essentially why would someone pay to watch airsoft you know well, you and youtube sean kind of almost talked about it inadvertently before is that it's two different cultures you know people will pay to watch mma fights i mean you can't go you can't go be an mma fighter on the weekend you know like you said you know People do airsoft on the weekends. You have to kind of commit to being an MMA fighter. You're going to get punched in the face. You know, ideally, you're mm-hmm. not getting punched in the face on the weekend when you play at Strike Force. You know, <laughs> yeah. Most people who like MMA can't do it, or are not good enough to be in like a, even a Triton fight or even you know, something bigger. Whereas with airsoft, anybody can do it, and anybody can yeah. potentially be good at it, because to a point, it's like. It's plastic BBs being fired out of, you know, a potentially plastic gun. I would argue Tristan because Tristan had a I, – I, Tristan, I cannot harp enough on that footage from when you did, did the bag dump. That, well, and that you, thing too. Like that's another that mastery so of it is that oh. it was something so silly and, and kind of stupid, but it's so a mastery as too that you got up to somebody who was able to dump a bag on them. Yeah, airsoft mm-hmm. is like more of an arcade game while MMA is like you can only get punched in the face so much until – your head explodes or whatever. It's much harder to make people pay to watch a thing that they can do themselves on the weekend. Artistry thing. But yeah. with yeah. airsoft, it's more accessible. Mm-hmm. MMA fights are not as accessible as airsoft sessions. Yeah, you could you could net a few you can net yourself a few thousand views by by playing a session and being an edgy mag dump boy and mumble rap it playing some mumble rap over you just lighting up rentals at a twelve to four session. But if you're an MMA fighter, you could go years training and never get a platform to showcase your skills. Or get punched in the face and then call it quits. Like what's the value that I'm getting in paying for this? And a part of the problem at that point too was Nobody still, still nobody knew what the airsoft pro league was besides a logo. I don't know what I'm paying for. Like Liddy, he was like at the time. Like now we know it was supposed to be six episodes. Well, that was the original plan, but at the time we didn't know that. So it's like I'm paying, I don't know, it was twenty nine dollars. It's like what am I getting? Is it two episodes? Is it fifteen dollars per episode? You know, is it a five minute episode? Is it a twenty? You know, is this like Netflix where I'm gonna get six hour long episodes? You know, you had no idea. ASAP, we kind of talked about a bit already. Well, not too much, but like, but oh, those guys. Yeah. The, oh my God, Chris was yeah. furious about those dudes. Well, because they make they brought up yeah, and I was just listening to a bit of it, but like yeah, they brought up the same kind of points. Like, why would people pay for it? You know, and unfortunately for Chris, he had no good answer because again, from his the MMA kind of style of stuff, it just makes sense. Yeah, I do remember that point. Yeah, he he def- he tried he tried so hard to def- to deflect any time people asked him about financing it, about how he uh, and which the financing fine that's your business. But when people kind of started coming at him asking him about the gameplay, he was so defensive about it. And I asked him, I'm like. Chris, like, you got to talk to people about what this is. Nobody knows. And he's like, no, if I go out and talk about it, then other people are going to copy me and what I'm doing. And he was so scared of that idea. And, you know, he just, he was really kind of like at a point, I guess, where, you know, his business was probably like hinging on this thing working. Yeah. Because I know the le- the last thing that Triton Fights did was a fight down in Florida, and that's where he rented the slingshot. And then after that fight, Triton Fights disappeared, and Chris changed his name to Flex. Flex it became Flex Fight Series, and he was the Flex Matchmaker. Oh, you know? Yeah. That's that's why I personally think that, that it bankrupted him. I think he spent money on it. It bankrupted him. He folded, formed a new company. 
another ass uh, another ass off another Instagram account being formed, um, the quote unquote ass off the gullible league, both po- posting memes and kind of like constantly reminding people, hey, this hasn't been released yet. If you paid money for it, you still haven't gotten the thing you paid money for. That's where you got him getting absolutely wrecked and destroyed um, by people on the internet. Every so often, I'll still go watch the Airsoft Gullible League video on YouTube where it's just a <laughs> five-minute long dump. And it's, 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 it's only stuff that absolute cringe lord masters who have been actually like been there would really understand so i i gotta give whoever's running that account credit because they they, yeah. they honestly do a solid job at, it, at really hitting what it was like to either to be somebody who like you know like to, to people to be one of the people who, who played in it as well as like people who on the outside are just watching this shit show happen being like why did i just give this random internet man 24 dollars yeah why haven't they officially responded about the delays in over a year again as we had said in the beginning the APL account hasn't talked about stuff. Um, I think the last thing they posted was in May. Yeah, the la- let me see. The last I interacted with 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 Machi was um, I'm gonna have to check my Instagram here. Yeah, well, and him and for Machi, his last post about it uh, as well was also on October 30th, 2020. Um, again, as we had said, he had distanced himself greatly from it. And has essentially just not acknowledged his existence. You'll see him, as I'm sure you're looking up, uh, interact with people uh, in the comment section of, again, as we said, stuff like the Ass Off off the Gullible League or other posts. Yeah, the last I heard from him was pretty much when he had said that that this October was when the product was going to be coming out. Yeah. Oh, wait. Tristan, wasn't that like April or something like that? He said he posted a clip of uh like your gameplay and then you tagged him on it and then he's like oh it's gonna be released on october and i was like and i was like yeah good luck with that yeah 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 because at that point it had become like a joke that it was like oh yeah sure you are you know of course and then that's what set the that's what set the stage for this final little little uh little breath of uh of air before everything kind of just went south because again he you know by by not giving up anything and I'm sure it was something that he spoke about with with Nick was just don't respond to anything because any anything they said and responded would just keep this alive. You know, the only person because, again, I've been speaking with Jake, the only person who technically, quote unquote, responded to all this was Train. I called out Train on Instagram and said, dude, like maybe, you know, what's going on. Can you release some of the footage? Because that's what this whole thing has evolved into now is we know the APL is not coming out. The only thing I want is the first person footage that everybody who participated and played in had shot themselves on their own cameras because me and other people who played had their stuff wiped when they submitted it, which understandable it's hit it it, because it was, you know, like for the production. But now that the show isn't coming out, I think pretty sure they should release the footy to YouTube. If he gives a single shit about retaining any face in the airsoft community, which I don't think he does, because again, yeah, we can kind of pretty combine pretty... all these end bits, these all these end questions in this one thing right here. Yeah, I don't think he does. No, no, I don't think that he cares in the slightest about this, and I think that at this point he's probably gonna sit on the footage just to spite the community and the people who played in it, and they're honestly the and it's like they're the ones who suffered the most because for me, yeah, he trained it great. His promos, I got it like. Again, the hype was real. They built some amazing promos and they made everything look solid. And Train was a lot to do with that. You know, he definitely delivered. And, uh, you know, I, I was I'm just thankful of the fact that he even at least took the time to, to mm-hmm. say something, you know, I think um, uh, money wise, what happened was that because he's so used to MMA where he's got he basically has two ways to make money when he has a fight is that people pay to go in line in person and then he edits it and puts it on as a pay-per-view and he makes so, so to speak double the money and that made his fortune as you said so that he had the money to do this because you couldn't do the have a live audience of any kind he was very much banking i think on the pay-per-view the pre-orders and i don't think that happened i don't think the pre-order numbers were anywhere close to what he needed to do it, which is why I think he released the first episode of free anyway, because if I pre-ordered for five, six episodes and you gave one away for free, I've kind of lost money now. So I think he did that purely to get the pre-orders up. They didn't happen. 
And so he was based in this situation of like, I now have no incentive to release these videos. And especially at this point with how long it's been, you know, if anything, him releasing them now would probably just draw more attention to him that he just doesn't want. Highly doubt we'll see it, which is a shame. Even though he keeps saying like, oh, you know, it's delayed and it'll be out soon or whatever. I can't, one, it while editing does take a while, it doesn't take that long. Especially if they were able to get the first episode up that fairly quickly. It blows my mind. I really don't think Chris had any idea that editing eight different first-person cameras, uh, two drones, two, two gimbals, four, and two... And, like, there was, like, three or four other, like, stationary cameras. I was even going to his Instagram on the, 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 the Triton fights or the Fleck fights thing to see if it had, like, a preview of what you'd see. Because I'm curious to see how many cameras he uses for that. Because I don't know why he brought so many cameras and so many people to film. Uh, Sean, so you don't think it's going to come out either then? No, I mean, no, definitely not. You know, the the guy, he put so much forward. He pretty much, he put his entire reputation with this community on the line in, in the most public way possible. And then it just completely went to went to shit. You know, he he flubbed so much, fil- he, fl- he flubbed the post-production, he flubbed every media interview he tried to do. You know, and uh, yeah, I, I, just, I just I don't think it's going to come out, which is a real disgrace. It's it's interesting, though, because a lot of the people who've who've been involved in it have moved on. Most people at yeah. this point have moved on. And while they even people who I played with that we you know, we took it to the end. We we we, we won the thing. You know, we we freaking won the Airsoft Pro League, <laughs> which is a weird trip for me, dude. Like I went from helping them, you know, sanity check the idea to building the field to then suddenly playing, being accused of people who participated as as having inside knowledge, which at the end of the day, you wouldn't th- it didn't actually work out as much as you would think it would. No, it would not the, have helped. The, the, no, the, the biggest thing, the biggest reason why the team I was on won was because rec- one of our players had a shield, and we we used the shield very strategically. Yeah. But, uh, you know, nobody really cares at this point. Like, a lot of people, I think, are interested that we're involved in it, but, you know, it's... it's and I think that Machi's kind of banking on this. I think he's hoping that the Airsoft community just moves on, which it will, and it has, because for the most part... We get new content every single day. Caber from True Aim over in California. Caber is a is an owner slash ref at this field out in California, and he's just a very deadpan dude. I remember he did a live, almost like review of the Airsoft Pro League first episode. Uh, and something he said stuck with me so hard. He was like, I totally understand where Machi's coming from and why the dude responds the way he does online. He's an MMA guy. This is what they do. If you give them any kind of criticism, you know, whether it be constructive or shit or shit or, or shit posting, they're going to throw it right back in your face. And Chris came into Airsoft with the same mentality as MMA. And he thought that p- other people in Airsoft had that same exact mentality. And when it all fell down on him, I think he really just gave a sh- didn't give a shit about the community anymore and was just like, whatever. What am I producing this for? Who am I producing it for? All these people suck. <laughs> yeah, you know that. Yeah, that was that was his mentality. Real quick, we'll just end with where can people find you? Kristen Arden Airsoft on YouTube and Instagram, basically. All right, Sean, what about you? Outer Heaven Airsoft on on YouTube, and then O H A Soft on Instagram. <laughs> and then yes, I am the Camera Ninja. Um, so either Camera Ninja, or basically anywhere, or Ninja of Cameras on the few places where it's already been taken. Sadly. But thank you for listening. Um, Hopefully we will be back with another one about the filming aspect because, again, we were all there. So it would be neat to talk about the stories and the process of the production. And then for some of us who were there uh, during the post and even the pre-production to kind of talk about that process as well. But either way, keep an eye out for us on your lovely podcast.